I made pizza ravioli. I was gonna say it looks like ravioli. Should that be a thing? Did like why is pizza, pizza ravioli a thing? It I think it probably is so somewhere. Much. Really? Yeah. I've never heard of it. College dorm rooms, like. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> ah! Ow, mother. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Claire. I'm in the BA Test Kitchen and today I'm making gourmet pizza rolls. I've never had one of these before, but in my mind it is a smaller hot pocket. So I'm feeling pretty good about this today. I do think growing up you had Totino's pizza rolls or you had bagel bites. And in my house we had bagel bites. It's sort of unbelievable that my mom let us eat that. But this seems like a classic mom and dad aren't home, kids have to feed themselves kind of after school snack. Ooh, you guys. This is the first time we've ever seen ingredients go into two columns. Don't feel good about that. I like the sides a lot. They seem like they'd be fun to eat, just sort of little finger food. They're little rectangles. It's like it's wrapped around the two shorter sides and then the two longer sides are kind of crimped and pinched to close. Yeah, they're like, they're like little pillows. They're so cute. Fake or microwave? Microwave? Okay. My microwave broke and it just shoots sparks so every time you turn it on, even with nothing in it. <laughs> so we unplugged it. Well, wow, one minute is really very fast. <laughs> All right, they feel done. These are a little sad. They got kind of soft. Chris has the right idea when he takes bites this small. The crust is kind of weirdly hard and chewy, but overall it's like, I get it. It's kind of not bad, pretty good. I just think when you combine tomato flavor, oregano, cheese, and pepperoni, it just sends a signal to your brain that like you're eating pizza. Andy, do you ever eat, um, Totino's pizza rolls? No, me neither. Man, it's so sad. Yeah, the, the crust is really. The crust is so disappointing. It's yeah, like, it's hard and like flavorless. It's hard and it's, it's dense. I don't want to be overly confident, but having already done Hot Pockets. Uh, this is like a smaller version. I'll be she done. nailed Hot Pockets. I think I'll be done so today. Good. Yeah, Hot Pockets did all the work. Very chewy. Yeah. And gooey. Mm -hmm. It's like the brownie bite equivalent of pizza. Mm -hmm. You can eat like a thousand. Yeah. Probably mm -hmm. without really realizing it. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> thing I like about these is I think there is <laughs> so much room to make them really good. For sure. You know, we're nowhere to go but up. But I, I feel I, like you, you get that a lot. Yeah, I thought it were better. Yeah. Please make them better. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That's the goal. Sorry, Totinos. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay. Bye. Bye. I gotta go buy a pork shoulder. Gabby, I miss Gabby. Can I just look at what combination is? Ooh, ooh. You. Sausage and pepperoni, seasoned pork, chicken and beef pizza topping pizza in a golden crust, sausage made, I don't know, these words in this order don't make sense. I don't understand what this is. It doesn't make any sense. I don't even know what's in here. It's chicken and beef and pork. Maybe we do a sausage version for this one and maybe we make the sausage. That could be fun, right? You guys, this is one is so easy. I'm loving today. All right, so I'm gonna take some measurements for the baked vinyl ones. Lengthwise, they're about five centimeters. Then width is about 3.2. I feel taller. Does this, does this counter get lower? All right, so here's a cross section. It's kind of cute. It looks kind of good. Did Hot Pockets have distinct pieces of cheese before you mi microwaved it? Here's my thought process. These have to be baked in the Totino's factory, and then like flash frozen in a package, and then you are reheating them, you're not cooking them, which tells me that this is cheese that just doesn't melt at all. So it's not like you're gonna get that stringiness, and that tells me that this is not real cheese, basically. It's very easy to break these seams. Like they're not well sealed, but what I see is that there is no seam on the two shorter sides, that it's like a long filled tube of pastry with deposits of filling, and then it's like punched in between those areas of filling. I think these do explode in the microwave and oven, and so if these do, then mine can too, and that's fine. I think it's just not overheating them. But I learned a lot from a Hot Pocket. Basically, they need they, they need to be vented. Oh no, they're leaking everywhere. I mean, I wonder actually if it's intentional that these edges are not well sealed and that maybe it's there to give, like not, not only the air somewhere to go, but the kind of bubbling filling so that they don't actually burst in other places. The dough is pretty thin, but I don't think it's yeasted, so, and it's not flaky either, so I don't think it's gonna be that hard, really. I'm A to A plus confidence level. 
because I think I have, I think pretty much everything is a known quantity here. I only need, gonna need water for this. I gotta take a break. It's so long. So it starts here and it goes all the way over. Okay, it's time for my favorite part, but I don't know if this is gonna be so great. Just reading the ingredients. Enriched flour, parentheses, wheat flour, niacin, ferrous sulfate, thiamine mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, close parentheses, tomato puree, parentheses, water, tomato paste, close parentheses, water, cooked pizza topping, with pork and chicken, parentheses, sausage made with pork and chicken, bracket, pork, <laughs> mechanically separated chicken, salt, spice, maltodextrin, <laughs> parentheses, corn tapioca, close parentheses, natural flavors, close bracket, water, textured vegetable, protein, protein bracket, soy flour, caramel color, close bracket, soy protein concentrate, sugar, sodium phosphate, potassium chloride, hydrolyzed corn and soy protein, soy flour, yeast extract, close parentheses, imitation mozzarella cheese, parentheses, water, palm oil, modified cornstarch, vegetable oil, rennet, casein, salt, sodium, aluminum, phosphate, potassium chloride, citric acid, guar gum, potassium sorbate, bracket, preservative, close bracket, sodium citrate, sodium phosphate, titanium dioxide, bracket, artificial color, close bracket, Maltodextrin, magnesium oxide, zinc oxide, vitamin A, palmitate, riboflavin, vitamin B12, close parentheses, vegetable oil, pepperoni seasoned pork, chicken and beef pizza topping, parentheses, pork, mechanically separated chicken, beef, salt, contains 2% or less of pepperoni, bracket, pork, mechanically separated chicken, beef, salt, contains 2% or less of spices, dextrose, pork stock, lactic acid starter culture, oleo resin of paprika, flavoring, sodium ascorbate, sodium nitrate, BHA, BHT, citric acid, close bracket, spices, dextrose, oleo resin of paprika, sodium ascorbate, garlic powder, natural flavor, maltodextrin, sodium nitrite, lactic acid starter culture, BHA, BHT, citric acid, close bread. Contains less than 2% of modified cornstarch, rehydrated, fat-free mozzarella cheese, parentheses, water, skim milk, cheese culture, salt, enzymes, citric acid, vitamin A palmitate, vitamin B6, close parentheses, sugar, salt, modified whey, beef added soy flour, dried onion, spice, methyl cellulose, rehydrated enzyme, modified cheese, parentheses, water, milk, cheese culture, salt, enzymes, close parentheses, dextrose, maltodextrin, TBHQ, parentheses, preservative, close parentheses, natural flavor. I just blacked out. Jesus. I've never in my life heard, I don't know what mechanically separated chicken is. But like, why do they have to say that it's mechanically separated? What does that mean, the separated part? What's being separated in the chicken? So if you cut out all of that parentheses and brackets and then internal parentheses and then more brackets, what you have are the following. Flour, tomato, sausage, imitation mozzarella cheese, so it's right, vegetable oil, pepperoni, and then a couple extras. All right, let's go over to the computer. I have to Google some of these things. I can look at the handheld pizzas. Ew, that looks so gross. A machine dispenses the filling at perfectly timed intervals. It adds one ounce of filling per pizza to one side huh. of each strip. So they really the are formed like ravioli. I mean, these are not pizza rolls, but they're similar. They add more flour on oh, top flour. so the crimper and rotary cutters can easily mm. trim off the excess dough. Okay, I think that the filling is piped on top and then they really are formed like ravioli where they're crimped along the edges and cut. That I'm not quite sure how they get only seams on two sides instead of on three sides. And then they're baked and then frozen. Pretty much just what I thought. Okay, so my plan is to start with the sauce because that has to cook for a little while. I think I'm basically gonna use the same sauce method that I did for Hot Pockets. So I have some tomato paste, red pepper flakes, garlic, canned tomatoes, and I'm gonna grab some basil from the walk-in. Basically the idea here is I want to make a really concentrated sauce that doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. I want it to be very, very thick. And now my basil, and then I'm going to throw the whole thing in the oven. My sauce is ready. I'm going to pull it out. I stirred it about a half an hour ago, and I think it's done. Got a little dark around the edges, but I think it's, overall it looks good. So I'm going to let it cool down, and then I'm going to puree it. So now I want to move on to... Oh, we're gonna make the sausage. That's kind of the fun part, I think, for today. We're not just starting with ground pork, we're starting with pork shoulder that I'm gonna cube and season, and then we're gonna grind it. You're just gonna throw a four pound piece of pork at me. Jeez, this thing is like throwing a baby. I'm gonna weigh out salt. I have fennel seed, black pepper. Ooh, that's a lot. Wow, that is a really, that's a much more efficient pepper grinder than I have. Given that amount of black pepper, I'm just gonna do a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there? <laughs> this is not cayenne. This is smoked paprika. <laughs> Sorry. A half teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. I'm gonna do a little. Okay, I won't do any cayenne. I think that's enough. Enough heat. Some red wine here, which provides the liquid. One teaspoon of finely grated garlic. Now I'm going to cube and weigh out two pounds of the pork shoulder. Take this off. Because we're just gonna ground it into bits, I'm just making 
the sausage itself and we're not going to put it in a casing. If Brad were here, he would talk about the Fleschenhocker, which is we have a manual meat grinder that's like by a German <laughs> company called, the, I think the name is Fleschenhocker. <laughs> All right, so when I mix the sausage, I start with the garlic because the garlic as an ingredient doesn't distribute as easily as the spices. And I'm gonna go until I start to see a film develop around the sides of the bowl. And now I'm gonna add the wine. And I just keep mixing until, you can see that the meat starts to look a little bit sticky. And when I poke my finger into it, see how it springs back? That's how I know it's done. I feel like that's how you know anything in Puerto Rico is done. What? The poke test. The poke test. <laughs> it's a versatile <laughs> test. So I'm gonna do a little quick test from the fry off a patty, just to make sure it's the right texture. Okay, this is cooked, right? Yeah. All right, the whole point of this is that when I slice it, it should cut cleanly and hold together. All right, that looks, that looks like proper sausage. That looks good. Hmm. Maybe a little heavy on the smoked paprika, but it's good. All right, sausage is done. I feel really good about that. Now I'm gonna cook the sausage and put it all together. I'm gonna grate this parm. I'm going to brown off the sausage and I wanna break them up a little bit more. All right, this looks good. Um, all right, next, the cheese. Ah! Dan, Dan, stop, stop. We got some low moisture mozzarella. I think it could use some dried oregano. All right, I think the filling is done. Quite happy with it. Now we should move on to the dough. And it's probably late enough in the day that we have to start it just tomorrow. Oh my God, that's so early. That clock says 5.15. That's wrong. All right, I really sort of think the dough is just flour, oil, and water. I'm basically gonna go with a pizza dough that's not leavened. Maybe adding a tiny bit of baking powder to give it some airiness. Because I think part of the problem is that on the pizza rolls, it's kind of gummy, it gets really hard. I think it needs a little bit of aeration. This is our trusty pasta roller. It's just a really easy way to make even thin sheets. I didn't start on the widest setting. <laughs> I started on, the, started on the thinnest setting instead of the widest setting, my bad. Let's try that again. I start on the widest setting to gradually work it. I might not want to go any thinner than this, I just want to do a quick test with this dough because I'm not really certain what the texture will be when it bakes. My concern is that it's going to be very dry and cracker-like. I'm going to make two pizza rolls. You know, I'm not too worried about the um, shape or size. It all looks so good. <sighs> all right, so mine's a little pale. I feel like I did make hard tack is sort of what this feels like. The leaking, I'm not sure what to do about that. So what if I deep fried them? Is that gross? No? This dough is not good. It, the problem with this dough is that it tastes of raw flour. Like it hasn't been cooked enough. It's terrible. I can't quite figure out what this dough is supposed to be. Like it's not pizza dough and it's not flaky dough. It's not puff pastry. I'm just not sure what I want this dough to be. Maybe just starting with actual pizza dough. So like a yeasted dough, since it is a pizza roll. And then maybe we, I don't know, maybe we do deep fry them. Is that a horrible idea? No, that's a good idea? Okay. I was thinking because I've already done a whole show about pizza dough called Making Perfect, that I would start with that formula. And we did use sourdough starter for that to leaven it. It's like, that feels pretty gourmet. Ooh, bread. You got any starter? Oh, you have starter? What kind of starter? Oh. Sourdough. Okay. Frozen. Can I have some? I can get it for you. Yeah. All right. In a couple minutes. Not, nothing in the fridge, though. No, I got. Uh... Okay. <laughs> I also thought that it would be fun to really upgrade the pizza rolls by milling our own flour. I also just love using the grain mill. It's my favorite tool in the whole kitchen. This thing is very heavy. <laughs> Please don't throw it at me. So this is a grain mill. Whole grains go in here. There is a grinder inside. Flour comes out. As you I- You grind the starter? No. So what happened here? It's, uh, I put it in the freezer. This is actually left over from- Pizza. Making perfect pizza. That's the recipe I'm using. 
Oh, the pizza rolls. Oh, you're making pizza rolls, are you? Yeah. Weren't you here on Tuesday? Who makes no, pizza rolls? No, you weren't. Rolls? What kind of a question is Oh, you mean what brand name? I thought pizza rolls were something else. Oh, uh, maybe I'm thinking of, uh, of Hot Pockets. Did they used to be triangles? Maybe, pizza right? Rolls? These used to be trying. I'm starving. Oh my god, look at no, the amount of ingredients. Did you read this? Yeah, it took me like 10 minutes. It's longer than most books I've Hold on, though. can I? <laughs> All right, 45 minutes later, I'm gonna make the dough. So I'm gonna do a mix of freshly milled flour and bread flour. So this starter is still really cold, but I think I have enough that I can kind of scrape off the sides of the container. So I do have to combine it with some active dry yeast just to make sure that we have bread by the end of the day. I find myself feeling very soothed and calm in a way that I never have on gourmet makes. I'm gonna cover it, let it rise. I'm gonna let it go until it's about doubled in size, more or less. All right, so while I'm waiting for the dough to rise, I'm gonna grab my filling from day one. Oh, jeez, God. What if it dropped and it splattered everywhere? This is red sauce. Okay, my plan is to form these like ravioli. So I'm going to actually set myself up with a tray, some parchment paper, and I'm gonna just portion out all the mounds of filling so it's ready to go when the dough is ready. All right, I gotta get this on a tray. Mostly there's concern that this is gonna be too big of a portion, but no one's gonna be upset if my pizza rolls are a little bit bigger, right? <laughs> Damn it. All right, let's look at this dough. Here's my risen dough. At least we know that something, something yeasty in there is working. My next step is going to be portioning out the dough and rolling it through the pasta roller. And then I'll get out my filling and I'm gonna start forming them like ravioli. I think I have to work a little bit on the shape, but this is just a test to see how the consistency of the dough is and also to make sure that they really stick. Yeah. Your timing is great. It's great? Yeah. Time is always great. Ominous, not true. Woo! Your timing is usually terrible. <laughs> okay. You fine. usually come in let's at a just, time where uh, I'm like let's say 50, 50. in deep despair. Okay, fine. Are you in deep despair? No. Great. That's love why your timing is great. I'd love to hear. It. What do you think is gonna happen when I do this? Uh, well, when you heat oil, it usually just gets hot. So what do you think is gonna happen when I put this inside? <laughs> I have no I'm idea. I'm nervous. I'm a little scared. Is this gonna totally explode? It might. Claire, okay. let her rip. Oh god, I'm so nervous. Oh god, it's well, inflate. It's starting to inflate. Oh it's god. It's really inflating. Oh my god. Like we're but <laughs> Cam watch it's gonna blow! <laughs> you think it's gonna it's gonna explode? Oh god. Oh uh, god. it's browning. Or is that just the sauce coming up? It's just the sauce I coming up sauce. underneath. Oh god. Oh it's ruptured! It's ruptured! <laughs> this actually doesn't look that different. Do you think That's they also fun. deep fry it? I think, I think they have. have to. Because I think if they were baked, they would have a flat side. I do think it looks similar. Obviously it's larger. I think the dough looks a lot better and I think in terms of the way it feels. Yeah. I think it feels good. I mean. I mean. <laughs> that's a pizza roll. Tastes pretty good. Yeah. You could stop there and be pretty much equal close to this. Are you no, kidding? I'm sorry, in terms of the dough. Like, I, I think the dough can get a little crispier. It can get a little more beautifully colored. Okay, so, but that what I'm hearing you say is different cooking, not different dough. Like, the dough tastes good. No, 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 the dough tastes good. I yeah. think the frying procedure just needs to be a little Yeah, bit. yeah, so I have, to, I have to tweak that. But I'm very yeah. happy with actually the texture and flavor of the dough. Thanks, Delaney. Yeah, of course. Great, wonderful support. I feel seen and heard. You guys, those taste delicious, I have to say. I have had some great thoughts since that first test batch. One is I think I have to roll the dough a bit thicker because as it drapes over the filling, it thins out. And I don't want it to get too thin along the sides. And the other thing, sound guy Mike gave me a great idea talking about, <laughs> what do they call it, panzerotti, panzerotti, which is basically a fried calzone that they used to fry them frozen, which gave you the idea to freeze the filling. So I found these silicone ice cube molds. I'm gonna press each of these little portions into the bottoms of the molds, get them into a square shape, and then freeze them and pop them out. When you make empanadas, mm -hmm. and you have air inside, mm. do they explode? They explode. So how do you, what, what's well, the method? You can have a very thin, like needle-like, Oh, a tiny hole? Thing, and then make sure that the dough goes back to 
when you're forming them. Right. Interesting. Right. Imagine this is round, right? So you're closing them. Uh -huh. So you always want to start on one. I do it on my hand. Yeah. So make sure that you're like taking all the air. Ah, out. with that hand, you're pressing out the right. air. Okay. Okay. Like when you make them, please. Yeah. I'm going to try something. As I drape it, I'm going to be very careful about eliminating air pockets. So I'm doing Gabby's trick where I'm poking a tiny hole to help eliminate any further air bubbles. I'm going to throw these guys in and see what happens. Is anyone else nervous? All right, ready? They are puffing. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Delaney. What's happening? <laughs> I know it looks like I've made no progress since you were here last. <laughs> That is sort That's of. Kind that of is exactly sort of. What it looks like. It's kind of what's happening. I just poked a tiny, tiny hole to try to get them to not explode. A little air escape and like, valve. Yeah, a little escape valve. And look, it's taking on color. Look at how they're frying up like little pillows. It's almost like you figured it out, Claire. Maybe. <laughs> oh, there it is. Ah! Oh, there it is. <laughs> ah. We need tongs. We need I need. Tongs. I need this guy. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. Ay, ay, ay. No, no, wait, but yeah. that one looks yeah, that's, beautiful. Yeah, but that's the one that exploded. But, like, it didn't lose that much, no. but uh, that's not good. That's not great. Not ideal. But I would... What? Like, ten more seconds, see what happens. One. Do one of them for ten more seconds. Okay, fine. Count me down. Five. Wait, Delaney, are uh, you kidding? Uh, <laughs> Delaney! Oh! Uh, well, you know, you don't know until you know, Look Claire, what happened! And now you know. This one's perfect. It is. Almost, yes. <laughs> right. Sure. But what, can I talk about what is working? Yeah. The dough stays sealed so well. Oh no, it's great. And even though there's like a surfeit, there's like a flat side and a rounded side, once yeah. they fry, you can't really tell. It looks delicious, it right? It does. Also like, I just and want hot. to say this. The thickness of the dough is perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. How do we get it to not explode? That's the question. You stick like a, a sorry, like a needle in there and extract Ooh, the air. Ooh, we have, we have. Let's do that. Wait, Next Brad, time Brad's, hiding, Brad's hiding them over somewhere, over there. They're over there somewhere? Yeah. This is a piece of fried tuna <laughs> that's just sitting here. Oh, no, no, he had them in a quart container. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, I think, ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, right oh, there, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. Right here. Is this what we were looking for? Well, these are the needles. That's the needle. Delaney, if you're gonna always bring this many contributions to Gourmet Makes, you can come back anytime you want. Whew. All right, here is my genius idea. That was actually really Delaney's idea. I'm taking just the, the hollow needle and creating like a air vent where the air can escape and then I'll pull them out and seal the opening. They're getting really puffy and I can tell they're filling with air, so I'm taking them in and out of the fryer to let the air contract again. All right, I think I got a pop. I'm gonna turn them over and pierce the second side so that that first side can cook a bit more. All right, this guy has a breach. All right, I think that unfortunately I have to call these done because this guy's gonna start leaking. They're so pale. I don't know how successful this is. I think that these are usable. I wish that they had more color on them. When I make one more batch before the end of the day, I'm going to actually leave that piece of needle coming out the side and fry them with that in there. And I think that that's gonna work really, really well. So I wanna isolate the metal piece from the plastic tip that screws onto the syringe. I'm gonna put this in the fryer and I don't want the plastic to melt. This is kind of a pain, but each one has their own little, what are we calling these things? Vent, exhaust pipe, I don't know. I'm gonna fry one by one just because I think it's the safest. What if this doesn't work at all? Okay, so I just have confirmation that it's working because, Kevin, can you see the air that's coming out of the metal part, the bubbles, mm -hmm. the trail of bubbles? Yep. So it is allowing air to escape. Well, hell's bells. I truly really did not think that was gonna work. I feel like I'm using up all of my Gourmet Makes Karma on this episode because it's just, I haven't hit any like major process altering snags. So yeah, I'm feeling like this is a huge win. Oh, there it goes. I've never, I'm enjoying this more than I've enjoyed any gourmet makes process. All right. We are done. Let me bring them over. Just pull out the, uh, the needle. You can't even tell it was there. And then once these are microwaved, they will have now a tiny little hole where some of that air and steam can escape. 
Overall, I feel a sense of triumph, even though I know I'm not done. I think they look great. I'm super into how they turned out. Wait, did you? I can't wait to tell you what your suggestion led me to. What happened? I wish we could like roll back the footage so you could watch. You'll just have to wait for the episode. Basically, it was incredible. I'm very excited. It is, I don't want to say what day it is. It's another day. The last thing we did last night before we went home is put all of the cooked pizza rolls in the freezer. And now the only thing we have left to do today is microwave them and taste them. And I, my biggest concern is that they're gonna deep puff. I love the way the dough like fully rounded. Oh, okay, I'm being told to hurry it up. <laughs> they look great. They kept their shape. They're totally frozen solid. They look great. Oh my God, Clean, I love them. It worked out really well. Wow. No, no explosion. No, so, th so they did explode, but then I did this thing where I took a hypodermic needle, like a really thick, dull one, and I pulled off the plastic thing that connects to the plunger part, right. and I used it as like a chimney. I formed the dough around it and stuck it in to vent the filling. No, Are you following this? No? Not even the little You know what? I'll demo. <laughs> I told you, yes. The needle, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna do my first microwave test. I see Delaney in the reflection of the microwave. Hello. This is the moment of truth. Oh, wow. I'm so, really nervous. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. That one sprung a leak. I can hear Wait, it. Wait, three. Sizzle. Hold on. Three, two, one. This guy. Oh, no. They're a little soft. But is that how pizza rolls are? That's how they. Okay, yeah. great. I'm going to try it. Those are good. Oh, I got a fennel seed. Did I, did I mention that the sausage is. Homemade. No, you did oh, not. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I made Italian sausage. Of course it is. I could eat 17,000 of those. Easily. Ooh. Not even bat and eye. Might be one of the more delicious gourmet makes results. I would agree. Mm. I so honestly good. might take this over the hot pocket. Delaney, you really pushed this one further in that suggestion about the little, the about needles. The needle guy. Yeah. yeah. I wish I saw it happening. It was, I want to see you'll the little speedboat thing. It was really good. Oh my God, you can come back anytime you want. Oh, thank you, Claire. <laughs> they look remarkably similar, don't they? <gasps> a pizza oh roll. Oh my God, you know what's amazing? Like that, um, like the texture looks so similar. I know, I know. You know? Um, I stumbled like that, into like that. Like micro bubbling kind of thing. That's why they are absolutely 100% deep fried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We milled the grain. We milled some flour. Mm -hmm. The dough is formidable. It no, it's is a thin layer. wonderful. I also can't believe you microwaved it to get this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pretend that I'm Chris Morocco. <laughs> mm -hmm. You won't burn yourself. Oh my gosh, your flavor. <laughs> so good. I like this. There's a spiciness to it. Yeah, I a like little it. red pepper flake. Yeah, I like In it. the sauce. Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Gabby. I love this episode. This is already my favorite gourmet makes I've ever done. <laughs> All right, Gary, I know I said that yesterday at 4.30 I would have something for you to taste. It took a little longer. I made homemade Totino's pizza rolls. Okay. Let me know what you think. So the flavor is, it's Italian sausage on the inside. Yeah, it is really hot, but it tastes really good though. Good, a little steamy. My daughter would love this. Yeah? How old's yeah. your daughter? She's eight. Eight, oh Yeah, man. she loves these a lot, but I think these are better. <laughs> nice. That's all I want to hear. Can I take yes. all the one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. One for the road. Yeah, I'm going to let one of my um, co-workers try it. Oh, good. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Claire. Thanks for trying, Gary. I think something happened in Gourmet Makes that has literally never happened before, which is I just kind of tried something and basically nailed it without having even been so deliberate about it. It was like this dough worked perfectly in the hot oil. It puffed. It sealed to itself. I think we can comfortably say it only took two days because it's just this morning it's just wrap up I'm trying to think of an episode where I felt a greater sense of triumph or an equal sense of triumph as I do now not that many I don't think I've ever gotten this lucky in a gourmet makes of like the thing I tried just really worked out way better than I could have hoped so it'll probably never happen again but that just means I have to enjoy it while it lasts and uh, I'm sure the next one will be terrible
Here's how you make gourmet pizza rolls. To make the sauce, heat two tablespoons of olive oil in a large saucepan. Add three cloves, smashed garlic, and cook, stirring until golden. Then stir in a pinch of red pepper flakes and three tablespoons tomato paste. Cook until dark red, then add a 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes, drained and crushed up with your hands. Add a splash of the strained tomato juices and stir to release any bits stuck to the bottom of the pot. Season with salt and add a large sprig of basil. Transfer the pot uncovered to a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven and bake, stirring halfway through until very thick and concentrated about one hour. Remove from the oven and set aside to cool. To make the sausage, combine 15 grams kosher salt, one and a half teaspoons crushed fennel seeds, a half teaspoon ground black pepper, one teaspoon cayenne, one teaspoon paprika, a half teaspoon smoked paprika, and half teaspoon red pepper flakes in a small bowl. Cut two pounds of very cold boneless pork shoulder into one inch pieces. Pass the pieces through the large die of a meat grinder with all the parts chilled to keep the meat cold. Combine the ground pork and two teaspoons finely grated garlic in a large bowl and knead lightly to begin to distribute the garlic throughout. Sprinkle the seasoning mix over top and continue to knead until a light film forms on the bowl. Add one and a half tablespoons dry red wine and knead until the mixture holds together in a very firm, sticky mass that springs back when pressed. Cook a small patty in a skillet to test for taste and texture. If it passes, cook about a half a pound of the sausage mixture in a dry skillet, preheated over medium-high until browned and crispy and cooked through, breaking up the sausage into smaller pieces. Drain the sausage and set aside to cool. To make the filling, combine all of the sauce, 100 grams of cooked sausage, 100 grams of finely diced low-moisture mozzarella, 50 grams of finely grated Parmesan cheese, and three-quarter teaspoon dried oregano. Set aside. To make the dough, combine 425 grams bread flour, 75 grams freshly milled wheat berries, 15 grams kosher salt, 75 grams starter, 25 grams olive oil, 5 grams active dry yeast, and 325 grams room temperature water. Mix until you form a shaggy dough, then knead until completely smooth. Continue to knead until the dough is very soft and elastic. Place in a clean bowl, cover, and let sit in a warm spot until doubled in size. To form the pizza rolls, punch down the risen dough and cut into pieces. Working one piece at a time and keeping the other pieces covered and refrigerated, pass the dough through a pasta roller until you reach the desired thickness, dusting with flour as needed to prevent sticking. Then place teaspoon-sized portions of filling along one side of the dough, spacing one to two inches apart. Brush around the filling with beaten egg white and position a tiny metal tube so it's perpendicular to the filling. Drape the other end of the dough over top, being careful not to stretch it over the filling, and press all over to eliminate air pockets and seal the dough. Cut around the metal tubes to trim away excess dough and form the pizza rolls into small rectangles, leaving the tube in place like a snorkel. Pinch all the way around each roll and use the scissors to trim the dough further and square off the edges. Fry the pizza rolls in 350 degree oil, turning once until puffed and golden brown all over. Let cool completely, freeze solid, then microwave to reheat. You know, you should do a really um, exclusive pop-up event. Yeah. And make all of these. This is a fun game. How much do I have to charge per pizza roll? Like $800. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say like 12 $1,200? $1, yeah. Oh, $12. But yeah, <laughs> 1200 <laughs>